Question is from Tommy James 81. Do you have an elevator pitch for trying to convince family members of the benefits of resistance training? Yeah, you know, uh, th- by, th- by the way, one of Mind Pump's goals is to convince people uh, of the benefits of resistance training. Now, the reason for this is because today, even now, resistance training still is not considered uh, the, the general health form of exercise for the average person. Mm-hmm. When the average person is recommended, you know, to, to be more active, you know, if you, you go to the doctor and the doctor's like, hey, you need to improve your activity or increase your activity, or they think, God, I should really exercise more to improve my health. The average person typically doesn't think about resistance training. They don't think I'm going to lift weights. Like my mom doesn't think I need to be more active. I should go lift weights. She thinks I need to be more active. I'm going to walk or get on the treadmill or swim or ride a bike. It's all cardiovascular type of activity. Nothing wrong with that. But if you compare them head to head and you had to pick just one, resistance training is superior. So here's the elevator pitch. And you've probably heard us say this a million times on the podcast, but the same amount of time that you spend resistance training versus other forms of exercise yields you far greater results. I can train someone for you know two, two hours a week. That's it, two hours a week. And over time, that two hours a week is going to result in a much faster metabolism and an easier time maintaining a lean body weight than someone who did two hours of cardio a week or two hours of any other form of exercise. So the pitch is really this. What do people really want? They, they, they want convenience. They don't want to work out a lot. Average person's not working out. So how can I do more with less? Sell them on that. Sell them on the fact that you don't need to work out as much and resistance training will give you better results. It'll speed up your metabolism so you can sit there and burn more calories uh, without having to do more exercise. Those, in my opinion, have been the best, uh, like I think the best sales points if you will, with resistance training, you know th- this is a really this is really hard, right? Um, trying to convince a family member who who doesn't want to work out to work out, and I haven't had a lot of success with this at all. Um, to the point where uh, I've got to a point where I just don't even worry about it. I just I try and live my life as an example as best I can. Wait for them to ask, and wait yeah. for them to ask, and and that, in my opinion, is one of the best. The other thing is this is. This reminds me of something that, like, I'm, I'm reading uh, this uh, uh, book right now called "Great Great Teams: Sixteen Things That All Great Teams Do" or something shit like that, and it's <laughs> talking about leadership stuff. And it reminds me of the success that I have had, though, with some family getting getting through to them uh, that wasn't working. Out. And the way I got through to them is to make them feel something. Right, I could sit there and break the science down all day long and, and talk about the benefits of it and the difference of lean mass versus fat mass and blah, 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 and try and sell, sell, sell them on it. And for the most part, I'm, I'm not going to get through to them. But if I can show them something and make them feel something, uh, then then maybe I can get the buy-in. And this is true in just leadership, but this is a very good and important thing to do with your staff and building a culture and uh, same thing goes for for leading your family into the gym. And for me, uh, I like to find something posture or aches and pains because I can show them something mm-hmm. like right then and there that sometimes will just blow somebody's mind. Like somebody, I'll have a family member that's like, you know, complaining of chronic hip pain or low back pain or shoulder pain. And they've just, and in their mind, they're just old. They're just old and it's mm-hmm. always nagging them. And when I can get to the root of what's going on, if it's obviously not an acute injury where they they tore something or broke a bone and it's just chronic pain, I can normally give them a few movements to to l- relieve it like instantly right then yep. and there. And when they feel that and, they, and you just spent like five minutes with them doing something, uh, that's the things that normally would, if I got somebody, that would perk them up. Because mm-hmm. most people just... We all want to, you know, lose a little bit of body fat, build a little bit of muscle, look a little bit yeah, better. You're not going to do that in a couple sessions, right? You can't do that, right? You mm-hmm. can't even do that in a great workout. I can't. I can show you a workout and it'd be an amazing workout, but you're not going to give them that. But a, a good portion of my family deals with chronic pain. It's just it, it, as you age and get older, and if you haven't addressed your movement patterns, uh, more than likely your family member is dealing with either knee, hip, shoulder, back, something. And if you learn and understand the body well enough, or you have something like Maps Prime Pro, shameless plug, but if, you, if you've got a tool like that and you can help them by showing them that, and then when they feel that, man, it's a lot easier to convince them on the importance of coming in and exercising and training 
Uh, that to me has been the most success uh, with a you know quote unquote uh, elevator pitch to somebody mm-hmm. because I feel like I could try and sell you all day long on something and it just ain't gonna happen. I've had a very similar experience um, and mainly mainly like waiting you know I waited out till till they'll come ask you know they they obviously know what I do for a living and so it's like it presents itself uh, sometimes to where I can kind of you know, steer them in that direction. But usually it is, it is through like some kind of a pain or some kind of a condition or something they're going through that I know that, okay, this is going to at least start building the conversation in that direction. Like, uh, for my dad, for instance, he's been doing the same routine forever. He goes to the spa and he does the stairmaster and he does all stuff. And now he's experiencing all this repetitive stress pain. And, and for me to just kind of take him through and, and show like, uh, you know, how to correct that through mobility, but also through like proper mechanics and squatting and adding resistance to that, building strength around the hips and, um, you know, has really been helping, uh, you know, alleviate a lot of pain. And so I think pain is a very, very uh, effective tool to, you know, to, to really convince people that this is this is the best tool for the job. It, right. It's to get stronger overall. Like that's where you're going to be in a place where, you know, doing the rest of your life is going to be that much better. Your quality is just going to go way up. Oh, yeah. This is what you do as a trainer. When you would get a, a potential client, right. if you could show them pain, which you could show them pain It's the best conversation. In one set. Uh, you're going to get a new client. You ain't going to show them fat loss. You ain't going to show them muscle building. You know, I mean, to be clear, the only success I've ever had with convincing family members to to do resistance training are ones who already made the decision to start working out. Yeah. Then it's a matter of what kind of workout. Right. You know, so they come to me and say, you know what, I need I need to start exercising. I think I'm going to start. Right. What do you think I should do? That's when the resistance training. Right, you never walked up to one of your family members who's no. morbidly obese or has hey, diabetes you start or has start poking yeah. them in the belly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. and said or, <laughs> and, or had a pitch that got them all of a sudden to wake up no. and train. Like those people aren't going to live. If they weren't doing it before. They got to this place. They're not doing You're it. You're like now. at dinner. All of a sudden, you bring the projector out. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Now that well, I got you, you know what though? So I was that trainer in my first early twenties. So every all of us I was were. so excited. Matter of fact, I know. I remember like I remember got in a fight with one of my my buddies. Like literally a fist fight over him being, what? yeah <laughs> what? yeah I'm, because he was so annoyed wow at hearing me like talk we would we go on this annual trip uh I, I know i've shared with you guys maybe off air maybe not on the show before that we used to do this every year we go up to lake uh, trinity which is up towards yeah. shasta yeah we go up there for 10 days same friends same people like 50 people go and meet at these campsites and we go there and you know when i we, i've been doing it since i was a kid well, you know, all after high school, college, and then moving to San Jose, then getting a job as a personal trainer, 20 years old, fell in love with a job. I mean, I've, we've all talked about this, like how much we were passionate about it. Hey, when you're truly passionate about something, you fucking talk about it. But in your 20 and you don't have this, probably the social awareness or self-awareness. <laughs> to know that you're annoying everybody. Yeah, yeah, right? Yeah. So, But it, it, the people I'm talking to, they want to hear it. It's the other people that are always around me, like my best friend who I got in a fight with. is just like, because he was always constantly... Yeah. All you do is talk, enough, yeah, man. yeah, tired of tired of hearing hearing me uh, talk about my job, but you know I, that's how I was. I was trying to sell everybody on how amazing it is and why you need to do this, and you know <laughs> nobody fucking was Just drinking the Kool Aid except yeah. for myself. You know, so you learn as you get older, and you've been in training for a long time that it's it's like anything else you're not going to people have to want to do it first if they're going to do it the best and, thing is just to be the example and then what people start to wonder is why is you know why is Justin have so much energy or why does Adam always look so good it's like or, pushing a religion on somebody it's totally mm-hmm. it's like being a bible it's, thumper it's nobody no likes nobody nobody likes that guy no, or just girl be is, the example yes you be the example you want to be the person who they're like oh my god i can't sal is fucking almost whatever 60 you're and doing look how i want good to do he looks it. like yeah. and look how good he moves like tell me more you that's know that's it 